Hi everyone, um, I'm Sue Street. I'm the Senior Land Service Officer for Livestock at Central West Local Land Services. So I'm based in Dubbo and I'm sure a few of you have seen me around. Um, so I'm going to be talking about weaner management today. Um, and this is based on the field day that we were meant to have at Galaganbone a couple of weeks ago. Sorry about that, my computer wasn't working. Um, so I'm gonna be talking about getting the most out of your use, um, key practices for successful weaning and tailoring your nutrition to the season ahead. So when I think about ewes, I think of them as an engine. They're the driving force behind your lambs. So ewes always play a pivotal role in terms of your production system. So one of the ways that we can get in, we can get the most out of our ewes is having her in the right condition at the right time. And these influence certain areas. In particular, ewe health and survival, increased wool production, improved reproduction, increased lamb survival, increased progeny fleece weight and lower fibre diameter, progeny health and progeny growth and development. So I guess the main things that we are really looking for in terms of weaning is that increased lamb survival, because we know that the heavier the ewe or the better condition the ewe is in, especially at condition score three, the larger the, the lamb is going to be at lambing. Uh, progeny health and also progeny growth and development. So once again, the better the condition the ewe is in, the better that lamb is going to do um, from birth and that will have implications further on in its life. So when I think about you management, I always think it starts at weaning. And that's the weaning from the season before. So I know some people think, oh, it starts at joining, but I always like to think a little bit more ahead. So I guess one of the aspects I want you to be thinking about is, you need to be looking at your ewes at, at weaning time because this will affect um, the management of your ewes going forward. So I've got a timeline here of some of the major aspects in a ewes reproductive calendar and some of the major things that need to be happening during that time. So for example, at weaning, it's a really good time to do your ewe count. You want to do a wean account, but you also want to be managing your ewe condition score. So the, the lower the condition the ewe is in, the more you want to get her back into condition. So three to three and a half body condition score by joining. And then at joining, once again, you can do a ewe count and you can monitor the ewe condition score because you want that rising plane of nutrition at joining so you can get the most lambs um, at joining. Then scanning is also a really important aspect of ewe management because you want to be able to scan your ewe, your lambing percentages. You want to be able to um, scan for dry ewes, your single bearing, your twins and your multiples. And you want to be able to allocate them uh, different nutrition per scanning. And, you, and while you've got them in, it's also a really good time to do condition scoring of your ewes. So this allows you to see where the ewes are going and in, and in particular, if at this stage, you need to improve the nutrition of these animals. So as we know, dry ewes will eat and live off a lot less than what a single bearing ewe does. And then a twin bearing ewe or multiple bearing ewe has high nutritional demands, especially as we're coming into lambing. So lambing is, other, is another time to be um, managing your ewes. Um, and it's also a good time to do your ewe count and manage, manage your ewe condition score. And then when we get to um, lamb marking, really good time to do another ewe count, your lamb count, and to wet and dry your ewes. So this is a really good indication of who has lambed who's lambed and lost, 
um, and you can have you can really manage your use um, in this season. I won't continue on this much longer because um, I want to get back into the weenus part. So I've just put together some U nutrition. So as I was saying, um, maintenance or dry U um, has a lot higher demands compared to a U who is uh, pregnant with singles and twins in early pregnancy compared to late pregnancy and during that lactation period. Um, I'll just leave that on the screen for you just a little bit longer, but also your crude protein requirements are really important. So at scanning, it really is important that you're allocating feed to your twin bearing ewes and from lambing, um, allocating that really high quality feed because their energy demands and protein demands are really high at that stage. And the better that the ewe does, the better the lamb will do. So for example, I've just put an example up here. If So we've got a U at standard reference weight of 60 kilos. So I've just used those calculations from the slide before and we can look at her energy requirements um, for those animals. So for example, for maintenance, a 60 kilo U needs about 8.7 meg megajoules of energy per day. Whereas when she's at peak lactation in that first month of pregnancy and she's a twin bearing U, her energy requirements have increased by a large amount. So her energy requirements are approximately 20.7 megajoules of energy a day. So that's why we're kind of saying to help with your weaners to start off with, managing your use is really important. And that's why allocation of energy and protein by preg scanning um, and feeding your use based on um, lamb number is really important. So I'll get back into the grunt of it. So we're going to talk about some key practices for successful weaning. So I want to talk about when to wean, um, the importance of nutrition for your weaners, um, paddock and feed allocation for these weaners, your management of your tail enders, which is really important. And then I'm just going to mention setting and meeting growth targets. I know Jeff Duddy has um, already spoken about this. So, you know, making sure you're setting your growth target of approximately 45% of mature growth weight um, and trying to meet your growth targets throughout the, um, the growing period. And then also to be vig vigilant on animal health and disease, which uh, Dr. Jill Kelly from LLS at Canamble will be having a chat about. So when to wean? My, this is my opinion, might be a little bit controversial. Some people might not agree with me, but you know, we can't all think the same. So I think um, weaning can be season dependent. So for me in really, really dry times, which a lot of you have seen recently, um, early weaning was really, really important for you. Um, whereas season's a bit like what we've got at the moment, in particularly, the one last year where we had plenty of um, feed, but also we had a lot of legumes coming up and everything. Weaning probably didn't need to be as important or as early as it has been in the past. Um, I think the U is also an indication of when to wean as well. So um, as you can see from the picture there that um, Jeff Duddy also had on his slides, um, by week eight, um, oh, after lambing, the you the lambs are starting to receive more um, energy and protein from the pasture than they are from milk. So they are starting to um, actively compete with the ewe. So a good way to understand when you need to wean is to monitor your ewes. So are they starting to slip in condition? What are they looking like? Um, that kind of thing. What's your pasture? like at the moment? Are you finding that your legumes haven't come through enough and you, there's actually, a, the nutrients aren't there as much as you thought there were and your users are starting to sleep? Um, also your enterprise. People all across the North Central West have so many enterprise types and I don't think there's one set enterprise that is the perfect enterprise. I think the enterprise and when's the best time to wean is really dependent on the person as well. 
And like I was saying with you, it's that you recovery time. So um, when you wean, um, can also have an indication of, <clears throat> sorry, um, when you need to be, um, sorry, your recovery time is also important on when you need to wean. So for example, if you're weaning, say at 14 weeks, you're giving your you some time to get back into condition ready for joining. Whereas if you're extending your you um, recovery time out, she has less time to try and put weight on. Um, and it also, like I said, depends on your enterprise type. We've got some people who are doing three joinings in two years. So that weaning time will be really dependent on that recovery time for that you. So ideally, um, weaning age optimally is about 12 weeks or about 14 weeks, weeks since the first lamb is born. So nutrition, really, really important, probably one of the most important aspects. I cannot uh, stress enough that you really need to feed for growth and not for maintenance. So I think this was really a good indication during the drought where some people were feeding for maintenance and not for growth and they just weren't getting the live weight gains that they really needed. So energy is probably the number one important um, aspect of nutrition. And it's also the first limiting nutrition aspect of nutrition, especially in a, in a grazing system, which I'm sure a fair few of you are just going to be putting your wieners on, on um, pasture or um, cereal crops at the moment. And then that's followed by protein, which is also really important. Um, protein is really important for your growth and development, in particularly that rumen um, undergraded protein or RUP or bypass protein. So this is the protein that isn't absorbed by the microbes in the rumen. They're actually absorbed. They go through the rumen into the small intestine where they're absorbed as amino acids. And these are really, really important for your growth and development of your muscles and your skeleton. So for an actively growing animal, um, you really want about 10 megajoules of energy, if not more. Um, and you also want a, your crude protein to be at 12%, if not more. So, and I'd probably aim for a minimum average daily gain of 50 grams per head per day. So it has been found by uh, Sue Hatcher um, in some of her work that she has done, which Jeff has also mentioned in his his presentation that by having a minimum average daily gain of 50 grams per head per day, uh, weaner um, survival rates um, really, really increased. Um, paddock allocation is also really, a, really important. So you really wanna be thinking ahead. So you really need to be able to identify and prepare your weaning paddocks by, by um, you scanning, so preg scanning. So this allows you time to, figure out which paddocks have the best feed, allocate them depending on your animals. So obviously you'd wanna put the best paddock for those um, tail enders. Um, it also will depend on the type of market that you're looking to sell your, your lambs into. Um, or if you're looking to join your, when you wanna join your um, ewe lambs as well. Um, a really important question to be asking, especially this season is, is your paddock clean? So you really want about six months rest um, if your paddock's wormy, or if you don't have that amount of time, you really need to think about strategically grazing um, these paddocks with either dry sheep or with some cattle. So for your paddocks, you probably need between uh, 1,500 to 2,000 kilograms of dry matter per hectare. Um, in these paddocks, you want them to you you want there to be green feed that's in active growth. It needs to be about five to seven seven centimeters in height, and you also don't want it to be too high either. I know that sounds really silly, but um, weaners can have some issues when the height is too high. Um, so I think over one hundred and fifteen centimeters, they can have issues, and um, that kind of thing. You also want about 70% digestibility. 
And what I haven't put on here, um, which is really, really important is think about your water source. When you're introducing these lambs to the paddock, do they know where the water is? Are you able to hold them um, at the water source so they can find that water? Because there have been some issues with weaners being put in paddocks where they don't know where the water is and um, they haven't been um, able to find the water and they've been dying from, from that. So um, these are kind of things you need to be thinking ahead. And also when you are weaning, what's the weather like? Do you need some shade and shelter in your paddock so these weaners can get um, out of the wind or out of the rain? Um, or if you're weaning over summer, you know, do I have some trees in which I can have some shade as well? Um, what I've also put in, because like I was saying, you want about 70% digestibility um, in your um, pastures. So this is just an example of the relationship between digestibility and plant growth um, and how it relates to energy requirement, the energy of the plant. So. If we look at about 70%, you'll see it's like between late vegetative, late vegetative growth, which is green, and it's also either active growth. So it's a high production feed, and you've got about 10 to 9, or well, 11, 10 to 11 uh, megajoules of energy happening in that, in that paddock. Um, now I'm going to mention the management of tail enders. So your lightest 20% of weaners should be drafted off at weaning, if possible. And you want them to be differentially fed and managed. So you want to put them in that best paddock, but they also may need to be supplementary fed. So it really just depends on when you're weaning, how light these young ones are. But if you can... Um, if you can increase the live weight gain in these weathers, you will help decrease your weather mortality. And unfortunately for the men out there, low weight weather weaners are 1.3 times more likely to die than you weaners. So that's one thing we've got on them, go uh, on them girls, that we seem to be a bit more resilient uh, than the males um, out there. So. That's also something to think about. So do you sex your ewes and uh, your weathers at this time and differentially run them? You know, are you going to sell your weathers and keep your ewes, that kind of thing? And it's all about thinking ahead and thinking about what it, what's going to happen to these, these weaners in the future. But I guess one of the main points I want to be uh, telling you is like by increasing the average weaner growth rate from about half a kilo per month to a kilo per month in the first five months post weaning, you can increase weaner survival by 85%. So for example, this is kind of going from 12% mortality rate to a 2% mortality rate. So that's a huge, huge change um, in in, lamb, in weaner survival rates, if you can increase live weight gain to um, 50 grams per head per day, but for your tail enders, if you can at least get one kilo per month on them, you will be increasing your weaner survival rates. Um, and then I just wanted to quickly add um, how you can tailor your nutrition to the season ahead. So. Um, a lot of you might be weaning onto some forage crops at the moment. Um, so mineral nutrition is really going to be important. Um, and also slow introduction and your hay. So if you're going to be introducing them, I know that there's been a few people who have had issues. You want to introduce them slowly um, if possible. If not, um, fill them up with hay and put them into the paddock in the afternoon. And I would recommend for the first seven to 10 days, have a medium to high quality um, hay available. When you're first introducing them to that forage crop, you want hay that they're going to eat. There's no use feeding them straw because they're not going to touch it. Um, 
yeah, so do that slow introduction. Don't introduce them on days where it's overcast. Um, I know we have had some overcast days um, in the past, but it kind of looks like we've got some sunny days ahead, which is nice. Um, and mineral supplementation is also going to be important. So you really want your, your calcium, your salt and your magnesium out at the moment. Um, and kind of at that ratio of two, two to two, 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 one. So, and it's probably not just on your forage crops at the moment. Um, a lot of our crops um, or pastures are quite actively growing at the moment. We've had a lot of rain. So um, mineral nutrition is really going to go be important um, even on um, your pastures and even your lucents and stuff like that. Um, when we, you have high rainfall um, and you've got really actively growing pastures, um, you tend to have a high potassium level and this, this doesn't allow your um, calcium magnesium to be absorbed as effectively. Um, so therefore supplementation is gonna be important, but also with all this rain there, I think there's been some leaching so the minerals aren't, haven't really been there in the in the pastures as well. So it's all about, you know, putting some licks or blocks or whatever you use out there to try and mitigate any problems that could be happening. Um, another big thing is get in the paddock, do some feed budgets. Um, there aren't as many legumes this year as there has been in the past because we had such a good year last year. Um, a lot of our summer grasses have choked out some of our temperates that have come through. So you really do need to get in the paddock and have a look what is there. Um, because there has been so much feed, I think there's so much bulk there. Um, we think that there's feed, but when we actually look at our animals, they're not going ahead. So if you can, get in the paddock, do some pasture carts, do some assessments, see what's there um, and do some feed budgets. I think that's really important this season. Um, another aspect I'd be talking, thinking about is getting your feed tests. Um, the Wagga Feed Lab this year so far has found that the energy and protein of a lot of our pastures and crops and stuff have not been the same as what they have been in previous years. So. Um, so yeah, if you can get a feed test, do a pluck test, do, do whatever you can to try and, um, get your feed budgets up and running and knowing if you need to supplement feed. I think there have been a few people who have been caught out this year that, um, the feed, they thought the feed was there. They went and had a look, they did some feed tests and it just wasn't as good as what they thought it was. And that high energy, high protein for your actively growing animals is so important. So if you want them to be reaching that target of 50 grams per head per day to really maximise that lamb survival, that weaner survival, um, get in the paddock, get some feed tests. Um, and a big one this year will be to monitor for worms and flies. Last year and earlier this year, we had some problems and I think going ahead, um, Worms and flies are going to be a major issue and they can have major health impacts on your wieners. Um, so that's what all I'm going to leave you with. Um, if you have any more questions, um, please contact me. All my details are there. More than happy to have a chat. Um, and please all stay safe and I hope we can all see each other very, very soon.